Multimodal Composing, Mobility, and Writing Ideas, written by Kendra L. Andrews and illustrated by T. Mark Bentley. The connections among multimodal composing and idea generation are not unique to sketchnoting. Scholars and practitioners of multimodal composition have argued that engaging different semiotic modes in inventive processes may lead to new ways of engaging experiences, developing knowledge about the world around us, and even perhaps giving us a greater understanding of it. For example, in her graphic text, Syllabus, Notes from an Accidental Professor, Linda Berry invites readers to rethink the relationship among idea generation, semiotic resources, and individuals' embodiment and movement through space when she asks a seemingly simple question, how are our hands, images, and insight connected? Barry claims that both writing and drawing lean on a certain kind of picturing, not the kind that is already finished in your head or just needs to be put to words or reproduced on paper. It's a kind of picturing that is formed by our own activity, one line suggesting the next. In this way of thinking about idea generation, Mobility and movement through the places of our everyday lives becomes central to what appears upon our horizons, what is pictured in our experiences. As Joseph Harris reminds us when he writes about the New London Group's work with multiliteracies in a teaching subject, meaning and knowledge are not simply forged out of a writer's internal thought processes, but through the encounters she has with artifacts while moving through the world. Harris explains, the task of the writer is to forge new meanings out of existing materials. A writer works not only with the resources of her language, but with the artifacts of her culture. Print texts, web pages, photos, music, videos, graphic art, and the like. Rather than looking within the self for meaning, the writer looks outward to the culture around her, reworking and redesigning the texts and materials it has to offer her. In Harris's formulation, the writer's identity has shifted into a composer, and this composer must respond creatively and multimodally to her surroundings. The concept of a writer as designer is also explored by Kristen L. Arela, Jennifer Shepard, and Cheryl E. Ball in their student text, Writer Designer, A Guide to Making Multimodal Projects. These innovative scholars and designers explain how writing and designing always work together. And it is imperative that the new writer of the 21st century recognizes that distinction. Not only must students recognize that their identity is shifting, but composition scholars must too. In Remix and Composition, Jason Palmieri admits that there was once a time when I knew what it meant to be a compositionist. A scholar and teacher in the composition field was one who was well-versed in the theories of the discipline and was one who knew how to have students critically engage with words. However, with the proliferation of digital technologies both inside and outside of the classroom, the entire notion of what it means to compose has transformed. As Andrea Lunsford points out, where writing once meant print text, black marks on white paper, left to right and top to bottom. Today, writing is in full technicolor. It is nonlinear and alive with sounds, voices, and images of all kinds. We must heed Lunsford's warning and attend to these semiotic shifts in our composition classes. Multimodal composing practices such as sketchnoting enable individuals to practice this kind of pictured encounters when they transform cultural artifacts into material texts as they capture lectures, places, and experiences on the page. The available semiotic resources for recording these picturings matter significantly to the possibilities of what becomes represented materially in a given textual artifact and how it can be taken up in the future. Multimodal composing affords its creators a range of modes through which to capture and transform experiences as it actively relies upon multiple semiotic systems and modes of communication to relay a message, including the visual mode, such as color and images, the aural mode, such as music, sound, and tone, the spatial mode, which includes layout, structure, and arrangement, the linguistic mode, which incorporates word choice, delivery, and style, 
and the gestural mode, which includes interaction between people, facial expressions, gestures, and body language. Jason Palmieri reminds us that writing always employs multiple modes and writing has never not been multimodal. By representing an idea using various and specifically selected modes, the creator has a range of combinations of resources for representing the picturings of her horizons. Kathy Yancey, in her 2004 Chair's Address at Four Seas, calls for composition made not only in words. Yancey calls for a new key in composition, evoking the idea of a new space for writers and for invention through multimodal composition. If multimodality describes how we combine multiple different ways of communicating in everyday life, individuals who compose sketch notes create multimodality as soon as their hand meets the page. The concept of a writer takes on new meaning in the 21st century, where she is not only capturing her thinking with the text, but she is also employing modes that require a sense of composition, putting together text, the world, and her mind, and thinking through design. Multimodal composition, such as sketch notes, becomes a performative act that is designed through encounters with materials accessed as one moves through the world. This performative composing resonates well with a scholarship that has directed attention to the ubiquitous yet unfortunate conflation of multimodal and digital composition. Jody Shibka addresses this confusion in her work as she pushes through the boundaries of text, media, and meaning, where knowledge, creativity, and identity is constructed through the action of composing rather than solely through its product. We must remember that yes, digital composition is multimodal, but multimodal composition isn't necessarily digital. In her introduction of Toward a Composition Made Whole, Shipka evokes the words of Paul Pryor and explores a radical assemblage of semiotic modes and prior experienced places and times in all textual representations. As Pryor argues, Multimodality has always and everywhere been present as representations are propagated across multiple media and as any situated event is indexically fed by all modes present, whether they are focalized or backgrounded. Through composition, different moments of history, different persons, different voices, different addresses may become embedded in the composed utterance. Shipka also responds to Kathy Yancey's 2004 article, looking for sources of coherence in a fragmented world. To note that Nancy reminds us that a composition is, at once, a thing with parts, with visual, verbal, or multimodal aspects. The expression of relationships, and perhaps, most importantly, the result of complex, ongoing processes that are shaped by and provide a shape for living. A shape or space for living brings us back to what sketchnotes can provide for their creator. Sketchnotes allow the creator to relive prior experience by evoking the facial expressions, the environment, the sounds, and the sensory feelings of particular experienced places in time to be relived again and again in such a way that he or she can easily and perhaps more accurately re-experience it. In a similar way that we can re-experience a childhood memory when we enter a space with certain smells, sounds, or sights, sketchnotes can recreate an experience through its multimodal representation. In this way, sketchnotes can become an epistemic tool. It models thinking in a way that traditional print literacy cannot do or may prove difficult. Not only does the way that a sketch noter captures her experience demonstrate her knowledge of the topic, but it also constructs her knowledge on what composition is. Composing in a sketch note style embodies embedded differences that may remain hidden if only text or writing were employed. This presentation was originally performed with recorded extemporaneous illustration at the 2016 Thomas R. Watson Conference. The panel was comprised of work from Stacy Pig, Desiree Dighton, Chen Chen, and myself, Kendra Andrews, and was titled Sketchnoting, Mobility in Writing a Spatial Self. Thanks to T. Mark Bentley for illustrating, the tech team at NC State for helping, and thank you for listening. 
the entire script is available online.